Well, I have to say I'm a little confused today because my colleague pointed to an email suggesting that you weren't aware that we had a presence in Benghazi. So if you weren't aware we had a presence, I don't know how you could have interfered with security there. But nonetheless, I, I do think that's what they're aiming at. Uh, I know the ambassador was someone you helped pick. I know the ambassador was a friend of yours. And I wonder if you would like to comment on uh, what it's like to be the subject of an allegation that, that you deliberately interfered with security that cost the life of a friend. Mm. Well, Congressman, it's a very personally painful um, accusation. It has been rejected and disproven by nonpartisan, dispassionate investigators. But nevertheless, having it continued to be bandied around is uh, deeply distressing to me. You know, I would imagine I've thought more about what happened than all of you put together. I've lost more sleep than all of you put together. I have been racking my brain about what more could have been done or should have been done. And so when I took responsibility, I took it as uh, a challenge and an obligation to make sure before I left the State Department that what we could learn, as I'm sure my predecessors did after Beirut and after Nairobi and Dar es Salaam and after all of the other attacks on our facilities, I'm sure all of them, Republican and Democrat alike, especially where there was loss of American life, said, okay, what must we do better? How do we protect the men and women that we send without weapons, without support from the military into some of the most dangerous places in the world? And so I will continue to speak out and do everything I can from whatever position I'm in uh, to honor the memory of those we lost and to work as hard as I know to try to create more understanding and cooperation between the State Department, our diplomats, our development professionals from USAID, and the Congress so that the Congress is a partner with us, as was the case in previous times. I would like us to get back to those times, Congressman, whereas I think one of you said, Beirut, we lost far more Americans, not once, but twice within a year. There was no partisan effort. People rose above politics. A Democratic Congress worked with a Republican administration to say, what do we need to learn? Out of that came the legislation for the Accountability Review Board. Similarly, after we lost more Americans in the bombings in East Africa, again, Republicans and Democrats worked together. Said, what do we need to do better? So I'm, I'm an optimist, Congressman, I'm hoping that that will be the outcome of this and every other effort so that we really do honor not only those we lost, but all those who right as we speak are serving in dangerous places representing the values and the interests of the American people. Thank you, uh, Madam Secretary. Gentlemen, California yields back. Um, I'm going to uh, address a couple of things that he said and then recognize myself because he invoked the family members of the four, uh, at Madam Secretary, and partially this will be for your benefit also, but I want to specifically address the family members that are here. There is no theory of the prosecution, Mr. Schiff, because there is no prosecution. There's a very big difference between a prosecution where you already have reached a conclusion and you're just trying to prove it to people. This is an investigation, which is why it's so sad that nowhere in that stack that you just put up there, where the emails of Secretary Clinton, the emails of the ambassador, 50,000 uh, 50, pages worth of documents, eyewitnesses. That's the real tragedy T to the family and the friends. When you're told that there have been seven previous investigations in an ARV, you should immediately ask, why did you miss so many witnesses? Why did you miss so many documents? This is not a prosecution, Mr. Schiff. You and I are both familiar with them. 
I've reached no conclusions, and I would advise you to not reach any conclusions either until we reach the end. There are 20 more witnesses. So I'll agree not to reach any conclusions if you'll do the same. With that, Madam Secretary, uh, regardless of where he ranked in the order of advisors, um, it is undisputed that a significant number of your emails uh, were to or from a Sidney Blumenthal. Now, he did not work for the State Department. He didn't work for the U.S. government at all. Uh, he wanted to work for the State Department, but the uh, White House said no to him. Do you recall who specifically at the White House rejected Sidney Blumenthal? No, I do not. After he was turned down for a job at the State Department by the White House, he went to work where? I, I think he had a number of uh, consulting contracts with different uh, entities. Well, if he had a number of them, do you recall any of them? I know that he did some work for my husband. Well, he worked for the Clinton Foundation. That's, uh, that's correct. Okay. He worked for Media Matters. That, that, I'm, I'm sure he did. He worked for Correct the Record. I'm sure he did. When you were asked about Sidney Blumenthal, you said uh, he was an old friend mm -hmm. who sent you unsolicited emails, which you passed on in some instances because you wanted to hear from people outside what you called the bubble. We will ignore for a second whether or not Sidney Blumenthal is outside the bubble, but I do want to ask you about a couple of those other comments, because what you left out was that he was an old friend who knew absolutely nothing about Libya, was critical of President Obama and others that you work with, loved to send you political and image advice, had business interests in Libya, which he not only alerted you to, but solicited your help for, and you often forwarded his emails, but usually only after you redacted out any identifiers so nobody knew where the information was coming from. What does the word unsolicited mean to you? It means that I did not ask him to um, send me the information that he sent me. And as I have previously stated, um, some of it I found interesting, some of it I did not, some of it I forwarded, some of it I did not. I did not know anything about any business interests. Um, I thought that, uh, uh, just as I said previously, uh, newspaper articles, journalists, of which he uh, is one, a former journalist, had some interesting uh, insights. And so we, you know, we took them on board and uh, evaluated them, and uh, some were helpful and others were not. We're going to get to all the points you just made, but I want to start with your, uh, your public comment that these emails were unsolicited. Um, you wrote to him, another keeper, thanks and please keep them coming. Greetings from Kabul and thanks for keeping this stuff coming. Any other info about it? Question mark. What are you hearing now? Question mark. Got it. We'll follow up tomorrow. Anything else to convey? Question mark. Now, that one is interesting because that was the very email where Mr. Blumenthal was asking you to intervene on behalf of a business deal that he was pursuing in Libya. What did you mean by what are you hearing now? I have no idea, uh, Congressman. Uh, they started out unsolicited, and as I said, some were of interest. I passed them on, and some were not. And well, so he continued to provide me information that uh, was made available to him. I, I don't want to parse words, and, and, and I don't want to be hyper-technical, because it's not a huge point, but it is an important point. You didn't say they started off unsolicited. You well, said they, they were. You said they were unsolicited. Well, they, they were unsolicited, but obviously well, I did respond to some of them. Well... And I'm sure anything that encouraged else, him. Anything else to convey? What are you hearing now? I'm going to Paris tomorrow night. We'll meet with TNC leaders, so this and additional info useful. Still don't have electricity or BlackBerry coverage post-Irene, so I've had to resort to my new iPad. Let me know if you receive this. We'll talk about the new iPad in a little bit. Um, here's another one. Um, this report is in part a response to your questions. That's an email from him to you. This, is, this report is in part a response to your questions. There'll be further information in the next day. If you're the one asking him for information, how does that square with the definition of unsolicited? 
I said it began that way, Mr. Chairman, and I will add that both uh, Chris Stevens and uh, Gene Kretz found some of the information interesting, far more than I could, because they knew some of the characters who were being mentioned, and they were the ones, the kind of persons with the expertise that I asked to evaluate to see whether there was any useful information. We're going to get to that in a second. Now, before you give Mr. Blumenthal too much credit, uh, you agree he didn't write a single one of those cables or memos he sent you. I'm sorry, what? He didn't write a single one of those cables or memos. I, I don't know who wrote them. He's the one who sent them to me. W would you be surprised to know not a single one of those was from him? I, I don't know where he got the information that he did was you uh, did sending you ask? to me. Did what? you Did you ask? You're sending me very specific, detailed intelligence. What is your source? That well, seems to me like a pretty good question. I, I did learn later that he was talking to or sharing uh, information from uh, former American intelligence officials. By the name of? Who wrote those cables? I don't recall. I don't know, uh, Mr. Chairman. You had his information passed on to others, but uh, at least on one occasion you asked, uh, Ms. Abenin, can you print without any identifiers? Why would you want his name removed? Because I thought that it would be more important to just look at the substance and uh, to make a determination as to whether or not there was anything to it. Well, don't people have a right to know the source of the information so they can determine credibility? But he wasn't, as you just said, the source of the information. That but was, you didn't yeah. know that, Madam Secretary, and that's what you just said. No, no, Mr. Chairman. No, I no, said no, that no, I, you... I, knew that, I knew that he didn't uh, uh, have the sources uh, to provide that information. I knew he was getting it from somewhere else. Whether you, they, He knew a lot of where? journalists. He knew others in Washington. It could have been a variety of well, people. If you're, gonna, if you're going to determine credibility, don't, don't you want to know the source? Well, it wasn't credibility uh, so much as trying to follow the threads that were mentioned about individuals. And as I already stated, some of it was useful and some of it was not. Well, um, did the president know that Mr. Blumenthal was advising you? He wasn't advising me. And, you did know, Mr. he know Chairman, that he was your most prolific emailer that we have found on the subjects of Libya and Benghazi? That's because I didn't do most of my work uh, That's about fair. Libya I, on I'm email. not challenging that, Madam Secretary. I, I am not challenging that. All I'm telling you is the documents show he was your most prolific emailer on Libya and Benghazi. And my question to you is, did the president, the same White House that said you can't handle him, can't hire him, did he know? that he was advising you? Uh, he was not advising me, and I have no reason to have ever mentioned that or know that the president knew that. All right, I want to draw your attention to uh, an email about Libya from Mr. Blumenthal to you dated April 2011. It will be Exhibit 67. And this is, uh, <clears throat> this is informative. Should we pass on and in parentheticals unidentified to the White House? If you were going to pass something on to the White House, why would you take off the identifiers? Because it was important to evaluate the information. Um, and from a lot of intelligence that I have certainly reviewed over the years, you often don't have the source of the intelligence. You look at the intelligence and you try to determine whether or not it is um, credible, whether it can be followed up on. Well, I'm going to accept the fact that you and I come from different backgrounds, because I can tell you that an unsourced comment could never be uttered in any courtroom. You have well, We're to not have talking about line. courtrooms, Mr. No, Chairman. No, we're talking about intelligence. No, and, we're talking about credibility and well, the ability to assess who a source is and whether or not that source has ever been to Libya, knows anything about Libya, or has business interest in Libya, all of which would be important if you were going to determine the credibility, which I think is why you probably took his information off of what you sent to the White House. But here's another possible explanation that may give us a sense of why maybe the White House didn't want you to hire him in the first place. In one email, he wrote this about the President's Secretary of Defense. I infer Gates' problem is losing an internal debate Tyler, and by the way, Tyler is Tyler Drumheller. That's who actually authored the cables that you got from Mr. Blumenthal. Tyler knows him well but, and says he's a mean, vicious little, I'm not going to say the word, but he did. This is a, an email from Blumenthal to you about the President, Secretary of Defense. And here's another Blumenthal email to you about President's National Security Advisor, Frankly, Tom Donlan's babbling rhetoric about narratives on a phone briefing of reporters on March the 10th has inspired derision among foreign, serious foreign policy analysts 
both here and abroad. And here's another one from uh, what you say is your old friend, Sidney Blumenthal. This is a quote from him. I would say Obama, and by the way, he left the president part out. I would say Obama appears to be intent on seizing defeat from the jaws of victory. He and his political cronies in the White House in Chicago are, to say the least, unenthusiastic about regime change in Libya. Obama's lukewarm and self-contradicting statements have produced what is, at least for the moment, operational paralysis. I think that may give us a better understanding of why the White House may have told you you cannot hire him. Blumenthal could not get hired by our government, didn't pass any background check at all, had no role with our government, had never been to Libya, had no expertise in Libya, was critical of the president and others that you worked with, shared polling data with you on the intervention in Libya, gave you political advice on how to take credit for Libya, all the while working for the Clinton Foundation and some pseudo news entities. And Madam Secretary, he had unfettered access to you. And he used that access, at least on one occasion, to ask you to intervene on behalf of a business venture. Do you recall that? You know, Mr. Chairman, if you don't have any friends who say unkind things privately, I congratulate you. Um, but from my perspective, I'd like to think uh, I I'd don't, correct them. I don't. I don't. I don't know what this line of questioning does to help us get to the bottom of the deaths of four Americans. I'll be happy, help to, us tell, I'll be happy to help you understand but, that, Madam Secretary. But I want to reiterate what I said to Congresswoman Sanchez. These were originally unsolicited. You've just said that uh, perhaps the main, if not the exclusive author, was a former intelligence uh, agent for our uh, country who rose to the highest levels of the CIA and who was given credit for being one of the very few who uh, pointed out that the intelligence used by the Bush administration to go to war in Iraq was wrong. Um, so I think that, you know, the uh, sharing of information from an old friend that I did not take at face value, that I uh, sent on to those who were experts, um, is something that. Uh, you know, makes sense, uh, but it was certainly not in any way uh, the primary source of or the predominant uh, understanding that we had of what was going on in Libya and what we needed to be doing. Well, Madam Secretary, I'm out of time, and we'll pick this back up the next round, but I'll go ahead and, and let you know ahead of time why it's relevant. It's relevant because our ambassador was asked to read and respond to Sidney Blumenthal's mm -hmm. drivel. He, it was sent to him to read and react to. In some instances, on the very same day, he was asking for security. So I think it is eminently fair to ask why Sidney Blumenthal had unfettered access to you, Madam Secretary, with whatever he wanted to talk about, and there's not a single solitary email to or from you to or from Ambassador Stevens. I think that is fair, and we'll take that up. Gentlemen, round. yield. Gentlemen, yield. Sure. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you've uh, made several inaccurate statements over the past month as you have tried to defend against multiple Republican admissions that the Select Committee has been wasting millions of tax dollars to damage Secretary Clinton's bid for president. On Sunday, you made another inaccurate statement during your appearance on Face the Nation, and it's being taken up here, and this is the relevance. Here's what you said, and I quote, there are other folks who may have equities in her emails, and there may be other entities who are evaluating her emails. But my interest, my interest in them is solely making sure that I get everything I'm entitled to so that I can do my job. The rest of it, classification, Clinton Foundation, you name it, I have zero interest in it which is why you haven't seen me send a subpoena related to it or interview a single person other than Brian Pagliano because I need to know that the record is complete. And I'm going back to the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I, I'm, wait, Chairman, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting on you. Me, oh, I, 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 I've been I, very I'm patient. Coming. Just wait. I, I'm oh. waiting on the inaccurate right, I'm statement. Getting, I'm getting there. 
Mr. Chairman. Well, we got to take a break. Statement was, uh, well, it's not going to take long. You took up four Thank minutes you. over, so let me have I, three. I've let everybody go over, including you. you, Mr. Thank Congress. you very much. You issued a subpoena to Sidney Blumenthal on May 19th, 2015, compelling him to appear for a deposition on June 16, 2015. You issued this subpoena unilaterally without giving the select committee members the opportunity to debate or vote on it. You sent two armed marshals to serve the subpoena on Mrs. Blumenthal's wife at their home without having ever sent him a request to participate voluntarily, which he would have done. Then, Mr. Chairman, you personally attended Mr. Blumenthal's deposition. You personally asked him about the Clinton Foundation, and you personally directed your staff to ask questions about uh, Clinton, the Clinton Foundation, which they did more than 50 times. Now, these facts directly contradict the statements you made on national television this no, that, Sunday. No, 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 sir. With all due respect, they do not. We're, we just heard email after email after email about Libya and Benghazi that Sidney Blumenthal sent to the Secretary of State. I don't care if he sent it by Morse code, carrier pigeon, smoke signals. The fact that he happened to send it by email is irrelevant. What is relevant is that he was sending information to the Secretary of State. That is what's relevant. Now, with respect to the subpoena, if he'd bothered to answer the telephone calls of our committee, he wouldn't have needed a subpoena. Well, would the gentleman yield? I'll be happy to, but you, you need to make sure the entire record is yeah, correct, Mr. Cummings. What, and that's exactly what I want to do. Well, then go that's ahead. I'm about to tell you. I move that we uh, put into the record the entire transcript of Sidney Blumenthal. We're going to release the emails. Let's do the transcript. Uh, that way second. the world can see it. Well, we, we, we didn't. We the motion didn't. has been seconded. Well, we're not going to take that up at a hearing. We'll, we'll take that Mr. up Chairman, in a business I have consulted meeting. with the parliamentarian, and they have informed us that we have a right to a recorded vote on that, on that motion. We want, you know, you well, have to ask for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Well, that's what we want to have. Put, let the, the world see it. Why is it that you only want Mr. Blumenthal's transcript released? Why don't you I want like the to survivors? Have all of them released. The survivors, even their let, names? Let me you tell want you that? No, you, you want no. that released? Let me tell you something. Right now, the only one right you've now, asked for is Sidney no, Blumenthal. Be That's only, the only one you've asked for. That and Miss Mills. Cheryl Mills. But, Cheryl Mills. That's not true. No, that's two out of 54. Now, if you want to ask for some fact yeah, witnesses. We asked for a recorded vote on the, on the, the that, Blumenthal. That, well, you you uh, said from the beginning, we want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Why don't we just put the entire transcript out there and let the world see it? What do you have to hide? These are the only emails that you have released. And the fairness to Mr. Blumenthal and to the American people, in the interest of a complete record, if you're going to release his emails, release his transcript where he has a chance to give the context of those emails. Well, you keep referring to Blumenthal emails. I would hasten to remind both of you, the only reason we have Blumenthal emails is because he emailed the Secretary of State. Those are her emails. That's, That's why they were released. They're not Blumenthal's emails, and she wanted all of her emails released. She's been saying since March, I want the entire world to see my emails. Well, Sidney Blumenthal's emails are part of that. So here's what I'll do. I'll be happy to, to, to talk to the parliamentarian because the parliamentarian told me that your motion actually would not be in order for a hearing. But, but at the latest, we'll, we'll take a vote. The, the, the first week we are back, after this week, we'll have a business meeting. We can take up Mr. Blumenthal's transcript. We can take up whatever other transcripts you want. And while we're there, we can also take up the 20 some odd outstanding discovery requests that we have to different executive branch entities. Why don't we just take Mr. all of it up then? Mr. Chairman, the allegations that have been made against him are refuted by his own testimony in the interest of not having- That's your opinion, it, well, Adam. Well, if you disagree, then release the transcripts. Why, 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 what, why, what, why, allega why, what allegation, why, Adam? Why conceal the transcripts? Even if the motion were not in order, you have the power to release them, you have the power I, to I'll tell right you why, now, because I'm not going to release one transcript of someone who knows nothing about Libya by his own admission, while people who risk their lives, you have no interest in their story getting you out. Spend, you, don't want the, you don't want the 18 DS agents, you don't want the CIA agents. The only transcripts you want released are Ms. Mills and Sidney Blumenthal. Mr. Chairman, so the we'll, we'll the take only, all of only, this up in The only in November. person you were interested in asking about during your entire questioning was Sidney Blumenthal. If you're so interested in him, Release the transcript. I, you, you selectively released his emails. They're the only witness you've done that for. 
Uh, so you're asking why are we only asking for his I, transcript? I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask the gentleman from California to please do a better job of characterizing. These are not Sidney Blumenthal's emails. These are Secretary Clinton's emails. And I'll tell you what, if you think you've heard about Sidney Blumenthal so far, wait till the next round. Sure, that, we're adjourned. Sure.